Okay, so I'm going to start off by saying I have no idea who this guy is. The only thing I know about him is that he used to be a professional level gamer. I don't know if he still is. Doesn't really matter. But I had some thoughts on what he said, so I had some questions and some comments, but I will answer them in line within his video. So here we go. There's something weird that has happened in the gaming community. I'm serious, too, when I say this. For some reason, everybody in the gaming community wants game... They want games to fail. It's very bizarre. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that personally, but perception is reality for a lot of people. So the question I have is, why do you think that might be? Like, the whole thing with X Define is still, like, stumps me to this day. People complain about not having enough games to play. They do? But when new games come out, even, even before they have played it, they're like, that game sucks, I'm not going to play it. Again, why do you think that might be? If I had to take a guess, I'd say a big part of it is a natural response to sections of the gaming community feeling like they're being scammed, screwed, or otherwise underserved. They feel like they're being ignored or misrepresented, so they're getting a little louder. They're getting a little testy, too. I'm not defending it, but I'm not surprised by any of this. Listen, man, if we keep tearing down these studios trying to make good games, like, yeah, not every single one is going to be fun and not every single one is going to be a hit. But if we're sitting here, like, preying on its downfall before the game even comes out, what do you think's going to happen? So the implication here is that if we're too negative about a game that's coming out, that the studios are just going to give up altogether? Because I don't see that happening. But let's go back here first. First off, if a game isn't fun, then what the hell are we even doing here? Number two, I'm also not convinced that making a good game is the primary focus of these big studios or publishers. It seems lately like money is the main motivator, and if customers like it, well, then that's just an added bonus. If anything, it tells them that they've got a captive audience that they can extort for more money through DLCs, microtransactions, season passes, etc. If not in this game, then probably in the next one, perhaps. Number three, do we really think that studios and publishers are just going to pack up and stop trying if a game fails? No. They might piss and moan and try to minimize the complaints being levied against them, or getting their buddies in games journalism to do that for them so they don't get their own hands dirty. But eventually, they're going to change course because they have to. Remember, money is their primary motivator. Nobody's going to be investing in gaming and making new games. Do you really believe that? And you're not going to have shit to fucking play. You're going to be sitting here playing MW2 Remastered, Remastered Edition. You're going to be sitting here trying to play fucking... The same old games for the thousandth time because these billionaires and, and, and fucking multi-million billion dollar publishers, they're not going to they're not going to green light any new games, any new co concepts, any new IP. If they can't handle criticism and they stop green lighting everything as a response to that, then they will fail and they will have deserved it. But circling back to where he was talking about playing the same old games over and over again, I don't necessarily see a problem with that. I've said it before, but if new games stop being made today, I'll still have more than enough games across multiple systems, genres, budget levels, platforms, whatever, to play for the rest of my life. Plus, there are smaller budget studios ready, willing, and able to pick up the slack that AAA is leaving behind. I can't ever imagine a publisher that just won't greenlight anything because they're worried about customer reactions. It's just, that just doesn't happen. And I also don't see why gamers should have to prop up a studio that they don't feel has their best interest at heart. This ain't a fucking charity. Make a good product at a reasonable price and people will buy it. Period. If these studios and publishers won't do that, then maybe they don't belong in the gaming industry. I mean, I try to put myself in the shoes of myself when I was like 16 years old, but I can't. I was excited for new games when they came out. The problem is now we have too many options. We've seen too many different games. We've seen too many different ways to interact with games. Like back in the day, bro, when in 2007, when Halo 3, Gears of War 1, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare dropped the same fucking year, bro, the, we were lined up outside of GameStops, whether it was in a mall or attached to a fucking Hollywood video, sitting there waiting camped out, drinking fucking Mountain Dew, waiting for these new games for the midnight release. Everybody was so excited about it. I'm not really sure where the problem is here. How is having options a bad thing when it comes to games? 
no one is saying you have to play everything right fucking now. I mean, you can just pace yourself. That's an option, right? Now when new games come out, we're fucking sitting around a goddamn fire witch artifact, like doing a satanic ritual for the game to fail miserably. I don't really get it. And again, I ask why you think that might be happening. But I want to say one thing. It probably isn't representative of most gamers out there. Most will quietly walk away and you'll never even realize they left. For me, I transformed into a patient gamer, which meant I wouldn't play anything on release. I would wait. I'd wait a few months either for it to go on sale or for the bugs to be worked out, probably both, before I dove into a game. Why? That was a response to getting a game that was a piece of shit out of the box and never worked right. Nobody ever likes bringing home a brand new product of any kind and it not working the way that it was intended from the get-go. I don't know why we accept that with games. We really, really shouldn't. Again, I'm not defending the vocal minority that will go out and just immediately slam anything that comes from a studio they don't like. I'm just explaining where I think the behavior comes from. But I don't see the anger and frustration levied against these companies as necessarily being a bad thing because it's still interaction. These people still care. However, if more time passes and gamers still don't feel like they're being heard, they're going into that very dangerous territory of apathy. And at that point, people will start looking for other, better options. And these big studios and publishers, they'll be lucky if they can win people back.